You know what also sounds terrible? The fact that we need to carry sheetrock. One, two, three, four. Right out through that door. On my way to pick up the flooring and tile from Floor and Decor. And I am so excited to be entering this stage finally, where construction's done and we're gonna start putting things back together. It's a mental bump. It's tough when you're ending days exhausted and visually you have nothing to show for it because you're just gonna close it in and nobody's even gonna be able to see it. Well, let's get this loaded up and back over to Big Green. We have a loadout for Lauren Constant, 18 boxes of drip, drip wood oak. That should be fun to move upstairs. I've got the sheet rocker coming today to give a final walkthrough and give a uh, quote for patching in and skim coating uh, the third floor unit. So I'm just kind of getting set up right now so that I can get dirty because it's all plaster and lath up there and cutting out squares and for, for patching in is freaking messy, man. We've done it so many times and it's just a filthy, Filthy, filthy job. And I've got the secret ingredient to guarantee a good quote on sheetrock. If I know my guy at all, I know what the secret ingredient is. So when he gets here, we'll pop one. Prior to him giving us a quote, we'll walk around. I'll let that first beer settle in and then he'll come back with a number and hopefully it's a good one. While I wait, I'm gonna prep the areas that we need rocked. Forgot to mention, this is also where our electrician utilized this little valley right here to power the master bedroom. You've probably noticed by now that I live in these bibs. They're Duluth Flex Fire Hose bibs and they are amazing. You think I don't know what that is? That is a tech deck wheel, man. They used to be my jam back in the day. Sorry, Laura, I know you love these curtains, but they're coming down. That was easy. Now, all of these houses we've been doing all have this base cap. So, even though I'm not keeping this baseboard, if you're gonna be investing into one specific area, try to look for things like that, where the, I, I know that these base caps were made at Camden Mill Yard that is not there anymore. You can't find these base caps anywhere. The only option is to get a knife made and to get 
a massive amount of linear feet made of that cap. So if you only need, you know, less than 100 feet of that cap, it's not, it's gonna cost so much, it's not even worth putting that money out there. You might as well just rip it out and put new in. So I'm gonna try to keep this base cap because I know this is not the last property that we buy in this area. And if, if I can get away with just replacing short linear foot of baseboard and put this cap back on there, that's what I'll end up doing. So I'm gonna try to take this off without destroying it. Whoever did this base cap correctly and do a, do a nice coat on here. I finished removing all the baseboard just in time for my sheetrocker to show up. Over a few cold ones, he gave me a quote of $350. That price includes hanging and finishing eight sheets, plus some skim coating. Permits were finally approved and paid for, which means we can schedule for inspections and start getting back to work. But we are getting ahead of it. We're going to have our sheetrocker come and work on the patchwork pieces so we could cover up those areas that the inspector doesn't need to look at and obviously leave open the parts that he does. And that will just help us get a little jump on it. Um, so right now we're heading down to pick up sheetrock, bring it to the house. This way our sheetrocker has everything he needs. And then that's it for the day. I'll be able to enjoy the rest of the weekend. Kyle's got to go to work tonight. <laughs> Inherited properties and we, uh, we're just finding little things around just to really spruce up the place and make it look a little bit nicer. So we're going to make a, just a designated actual garbage area where we're going to actually lay some stone. We got some new garbage cans for them and uh, it'll just make it nicer. You can see it from the street. So it just looks a little messy right now. We're going to clean it up. Yeah, that's not going to fly. All right, so got new stencils. We did stickers on the trash cans at our last house and they didn't last very long. So I think these stencils will do the trick. I feel like we're doing like major surgery. Scalpel. Sponge. Bro. I don't want to wait. I don't have any patience. Quarter past the hair. Beautiful. Now that arts and crafts time is over, it is time to carry sheetrock up to the third floor. Taylor ham, egg and cheese bagel, disco fries at a 24 hour diner, and garlic crabs from a place of the Jersey Shore. It's so good. The third floor is good. It, they failed for the service. They're saying that there needs a ground run to the outside. Uh, terminal, something terminal. Land cow for service out, out line, line building signal and Sealed by electrician. Good news and bad news. We pa passed for the third floor rough electric and the rough plumbing, but we failed for the new service. It looks like there may have been some ground issue. It's tough to read that handwriting, but it looks like there is a ground that needs to be ran and then some other scribbling that needs to be done. So we'll get clarification and revisit it and get it taken care of. 
this is what we just finished and have been working on the past couple days while waiting on inspectors to come out and inspections. We wanted to really streamline and make sure that when we begin to dive into renovations that we can go through smoothly. It's really nice to have a nice setup and an organized space. It actually makes you and enables you to work faster. So when we begin to do trim and baseboard, Lauren will be down here. I'll be way up there calling out measurements and she'll be able to pop this trim up here real nice because these go straight across so she can run big long runs all the way down. I'm just unhappy with how this leg turned out. So Lauren's gonna start on this pretty awesome finishing design that we kind of uh, spoke about and decided upon. We have done it in our duplex and we found that this uh, third floor unit offers us the same opportunity. So she'll share with you what we're gonna be doing. I'm super excited about it. I love how it looks. Another thing, this flag right here was our first flag we ever put up. We've made it a tradition of ours to hang an American flag out front of all of our uh, investment properties. This was the first one that we hung up over at uh, the duplex in Haddon. It has since become too tattered and it's real faded to hang. So instead of burning it like you're supposed to when you dispose of a flag that's no longer able to be flown or displayed, we're hanging it up in our shop. We think it looks awesome and it it's kind of sentimental to us because that was our first property. While Kyle is doing that, I have my own project. So like he said, we've done this in a property before, but basically this is a chimney and we realize that it is brick, obviously. So of course it's brick. Chimneys are brick. So this is a chimney that runs throughout the house and it's in the bedroom and we did this on our first property. We had the chimney going up to the living room and we took down all this plaster and lath and it looked beautiful. So we're going to do it again. Once I got started, I realized this plaster is significantly thicker than at our last place. So what was supposed to be a quick demo is most likely going to take me all day. Let's see if Kyle's doing any better downstairs. Let me show you what I came up with to fix the leg problem on this miter table. This little fold up legs that are gonna sit right on that ledge and they're gonna be held on there just by the weight of the table itself. It's a lot more permanent than the leg, the one single leg that I had on there that I was taking on and off and on and off every time I wanted to fold the table down. So I wanted something a little bit more permanent. This is gonna stay there. We'll see how it holds up. But for right now, I'm really excited about how this turned out. Hey baby. Okay, so I found something interesting in the brick wall. Okay. Well, I mean, it was covered. I mean, I can shove it back in there. Kyle told me to just shove it back in there and keep going. So I will. There was once like really pretty pink and green flower and leaves wallpaper. It's actually pretty cute. I love finding old wallpaper like that. Hey, baby. Hey. While Lauren was taking off the plaster, she found this ceramic sleeve coming out of the brick. And I'm honestly, I'm not quite sure what it's for because there is a chimney liner here unless way in the past before chimney liners something was venting into here from the attic to go up and out that's the only thing i can think of and then the chimney liner was added later but what's kind of cool is what we're thinking about doing is putting just some of this pre-mixed concrete repair and we're going to put it in there just to make a little back and lauren had a cool idea to have this as a little shelf to put like a little plant or something on it. My vision is Kyle will concrete like that back part and then we'll put like a little cacti, a little succulent or something. Super cool idea. Yeah. Mm. 
just mm. finished taking all the plaster off and I'm so excited. I think it looks so cute. I love exposed brick. It's gonna make this room pop, I think. This is a great feature that if you do it yourself is an affordable way to add character to your unit and set it apart from the others. All we have to do now is do a coat of clear brick sealer. Well, that's it for us today. Join in next time as we continue renovations on Big Green. Be sure to like, subscribe to this channel, and follow us along on Instagram at Rentals to Wealth.